seated if you can. It would be hard for me to sit right now. Amen, amen, amen. I think about his intercession. I think about him bearing the load of it all and never did one time consider not doing it. It was his purpose. It was his will. It was his pleasure. Come on. How you know it was his pleasure? Because the Bible said, I delight to do what? Thy will. Oh God. His commandments are not grievous. Whatever he asks you to do, he'll grace you to do. You sitting in this room tonight and you're hard in to be down in some jungle trying to minister the gospel to them people because you ain't graced to do it. But I tell you one thing, if God called you there, you wouldn't be at home in this house tonight. You'd want to be there where you knew you was called. And that's the way the Lord works, folks. If it ain't, if it's just a constant nuisance and a constant battle to get your own self talked into it, you might want to recheck and find out that God don't force, He flows. Can you say amen? And how many know these poor little people all over the world have been forced into some job for the Lord and they ain't even pleased to do it? Amen. But if they could find their place, yeah. they oh, nothing no more miserable than waiting on somebody to find their place. Yeah. That's one time we have to bear the brunt while they find it. And they'll drive you up the wall, but when they do find it, they'll plug in. And everything will settle down. And God will start blessing. And the Lord will start flowing. Can you say amen? And we welcome you here on this pleasant weather evening. Hallelujah. And I'm sweating. I wasn't sweating when I come in, but I'm sweating now. These lights make you sweat. These up here sure make you sweat. Praise the Lord. And if you look up and look out, you don't see nobody for a few seconds. Say amen. But we're so glad you're here. And thank God Jerry's back tonight. Amen. And doing good and looking good. And I'm telling you, we're so pleased to see her. Amen. God has done a quick work. And I praise Him for His touch on her life. Amen. I thank God for bringing her out. Hallelujah. And I just bless all of you for being here tonight in the presence of the Lord. We're going to give to the Lord at this time. If you'd be so kind as to get an offering ready to bring to the Lord, we bless you tonight as you give. Amen. Amen.
even in that offering tonight. And if you have your Bibles, we invite you to open them to the 24th chapter of Genesis. Praise God. The 24th chapter of Genesis. Amen. I hope all them ghosts in here is the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let's see if I got it up. I got a green light. Amen. Bump me up just a hair. Is it up? Oh, uh, Sunday morning, your daddy had to mash that down or something. Wasn't click just right, wasn't it? I almost heard it then. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There we got it all right. Okay, let me have just a tad more and it'll be just right. Genesis, the 24th chapter. Amen. I'm glad to see Shalon back there tonight. Bless you, Shalon. Love you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Boy, we covered ground Sunday. Do you realize Sunday morning and Sunday night we talked through Genesis from Genesis 12 to Genesis 22? Oh my God, that's the truth. I mean, we laid some groundwork, and we've been teaching and preaching on kingdom seed. Hallelujah! There's a seed, one seed, not these seeds, but the seed. And that seed is Christ. Hallelujah. And out of that one seed comes all of us. Which means we got the same seed. Because a seed only re reproduces what? After its own time. And every seed, every tree bears seed within itself. Come on now. And Genesis 8.22 said, As long as the earth remaineth, winter and summer, cold and hot, seed day and night, and seed time and harvest, shall not cease. Can you say praise the Lord? And we got into some deep teaching, folks. If I lost me Sunday morning, I had to shake myself to close the meeting down. Well, that the truth. It was so just the Lord done it. And I had to shake myself to realize I better let you go home. Amen. And Sunday night we got in here and talked about those two sons. And how many of you realize God's plan is one? Always. But anytime the flesh gets involved, come on now. You had another one. And then what do you have? Warfare. You got two and, and each one's against the other. The spirit's against the flesh and the flesh is against the spirit because the only thing spirit can communicate with is spirit. And the only thing flesh can communicate with is flesh. That's the reason some preachers, you wonder how they preach and keep 5,000 people. That's because flesh can communicate with flesh. Praise the Lord. But if that's awful, I shouldn't have said that. that. That's come out before I thought about it. Praise the Lord. I don't know how you can feed, uh, uh, you know, two or three hundred, two or three thousand with a thimble. But I, I guess if you just got a cup big as a thimble, it don't take much to fill you. But I don't mind to tell you, I say this uh, unapologetically, I'd starve to death if I had to sit in some of these places. I'd just starve to death. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no way. I couldn't do it. I'd have I'd have to have the neighbors come over and have porch Bible study <laughs> before I could sit and, and submit my soul to such fleshy carnal word. And so what did Abraham do when he went after the flesh? Why did he go after the flesh? Listen to it now, because he did not yet have the complete revelation. He had part of it. He knew it was there was a seed. Hallelujah. He got he thought that was Eliezer, but it wasn't. God said, No, it's coming through your loins. 
So he, then he knew that part of it. Amen. But he still didn't have no seed until he met Melchizedek. When he met Melchizedek, he come alive with a resurrection order. And he come alive with a seed. Hello, church. Hallelujah. <laughs> and now he's got to have a wound to put that seed in. The whole, uh, the whole crowning moment of intimacy is birth. Of what? Of another seed. What kind of seed? The same kind that was put into it. Praise the Lord. Now my father was in his father. But so was I in his father. And his father's father. Then he come along and when I came forth in this earth, I'm begotten of that same seed that my father's of. So my son was in my father and my father's father and my father's father. Come on, somebody. I don't know how it's so hard for you to believe you come out of God. It's be harder not to believe it. Can you say amen? But how do you know that? Because in him was life. Listen, he's before all things and by him all things consist. He's the visible image of the invisible God. Praise the Lord. And so here's the thing, folks. All life demands expression. So a seed in itself is wonderful. To be born of God is wonderful. But Paul didn't travail for Christ to be born in you. He travailed for Christ to be what? Formed in you. Now how many know there's a difference between just being born of God and allowing the Spirit to form you? Into His image and in His likeness. Can you say amen? And form is just another way of saying you take on His shape, His body, His life becomes your life. Amen? amen. And so who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be what? Equal, Equal with God. Praise the Lord. Folk can't handle that. I can tell you now folks, apples don't put out oranges. If you plant an apple seed, you're going to get another apple. And if you plant God in somebody, Amen. well, glory. I can tell you the only thing they can bear is the seed thereof. Well, praise the Lord. And so we walked all the way through that. And there's one quick stop I want to make. I got so happy Sunday. I, I missed one thing I wanted to get to you. And that is I wanted to briefly mention how God taught Abraham intercession. God taught him intercession. This is what God said to him when he got ready to establish the promise. He did it by cutting covenant. Now the covenant in the long run is what? Circumcision. Which is water baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. I can show you that, but I ain't got time. I can take you to Colossians and show you that the circumcision is a type of the old man coming off. The old man dying out. The removing of the flesh. The taking away of the stony. Come on somebody say praise the Lord. And well, 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 see all that was given. But this is what God said. I want you to take and He gave him a whole list of animals. Of turtle doves. Beast of the field. All these animals. He said split them in half. Lay them on each side. And then you pass between. Now that's intercession. Now here, not just Abraham's, listen to it. He went through the middle of it. But in the midst of that, what happened? The vultures. Right? Started coming to do what? Devour. But now do you realize that fowls of the air are carnal thoughts? They are. Lord, I... And they'll get in your tree. Jesus talked about the fowls of the air nesting in the tree of faith. That's when you're trying to believe God in your dumb head. <laughs> Shut up. That's when you're standing on the promise and everything in you saying, man, this don't look good. You better just give up now. And Abraham did what? What we do, he tried to just smile them away. He tried to beat them off. And what did the Lord do in the midst of all that? He put a deep sleep on Abraham. And he came down. Now that's intercession, folks. When you can pray God out of heaven. 
When you can pray spiritual things over into the natural. When you can make both worlds come together. That is real intercession. When heaven and earth become one in you. And the Bible said when Abraham came to, there was a smoking, burning lamp. That was Jesus passing through them sacrifices. And when Abraham got up that day, he was no longer Abram. He was Abraham. He was not just father of many. He was the father of nations and the father of multitudes. Do you understand that? Now having said all that and having come up to uh, Genesis 22, we'll start in Genesis 24 tonight understanding this. Where is the seed now? Glory to God. Come on, tell me where the seed is. Is it in the sun? Oh. What did your heavenly Father do? He became a man. And he put the seed where? In the sun. Praise the Lord. And what did he have to find to release that seed of himself? He had to find a bride. He had to find a woman. He had to find a virgin. He had to find somebody that had been separated from the harlot system. Yes, amen. Now in the Bible, when you preach on the bride, you got to realize that parallel beside that is the harlot. You got the bride and you got the harlot. Now the harlot will respond to anything, but the bride can only hear one thing. And that's what the Spirit is saying to the churches in this hour. Can you say amen? The woman of the harlotry system is Proverbs 7, but the bride is Proverbs 31. In Proverbs 7, there's a woman that lays in wait to deceive the young men as they come by. They'll even get in the branches of the trees over their head and beckon them to go into their rooms where they have Egyptian tapestries. And that's what Proverbs 7 says. And then in Proverbs 31, you got a woman whose husband rises up in the gates and calls her blessed whose children raise up and praise her, whose candle goeth not out by night. Can you see the, re the resemblance here? We're dealing with a spiritual thing. Where is the seed now? The seed is in the sun. Well, is it going to stay in the sun? No, it can't stay in the sun. Jesus cannot remain an individual. Well, glory. The, the anointing on all of us is better than the anointing on any one of us. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? And so, I better read. Or we'll be here a while. Uh, Genesis 24, and listen, I'm going to read speedy reading and not stop because I don't want to preach in between these scriptures. I want to just get, get this in here. here. We're going to start in verse, let me see what verse I put down here to start with. In verse 10, yes, that's what I thought. Verse 10 we're going to read through 19. Are you there? And the servant took ten camels, and the camels of his master, and, and of, of the camels of his master, and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahar. And he made his camels to kneel without the city. Now I can't, I said I wasn't going to stop there, no more. And by a well of water at the time of the evening when the women go to draw water. I wonder if there's any women out tonight drawing water. Oh, praise the Lord. And he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day. Show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water. The daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give the camels drink. <laughs> also, 
Let the same be that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Listen now. And it came to pass that before he had done speaking. That behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her picture upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. <coughs> she was a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, came up, and the servant ran to meet her and said, I pray thee, drink a little, let me drink a little water of thy pitcher. She said, Drink, my Lord, and she hasted. Oh, and let down her pitcher. And when she had done giving it a drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels until they're done. I won't stop short. I won't quit before I see what I'm after. I won't stop until they quit drinking. Somebody say amen. How many know the camels ain't through drinking tonight? God's still pulling on our coattails to pray, to seek Him, to love Him, to get in the Spirit. Can you say amen? Somebody say, well, what's the kingdom got to do with camels? Loads. Loads to do with it. And if you really believe what I say, you start acting like you was riding one tonight. Because if you get put on one, it means you're the bride. And it means you've got nine more of gifts. Loaded. My God. I'm ready to see the church loaded with gifts. Operating in the Holy Ghost. Ministering the divine nature of God. Amen. Amen. All right, verse 29, verse 29. And Rebekah had a brother named was Laban, and Laban ran out to the man of the well, and it came to pass that he saw something. What did he saw? He saw an earring and bracelets. Hey, Amen. Them no jewelry folks couldn't handle this passage of Scripture. And he said, uh, when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister said, Thus spake that man unto me, he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well, my Lord. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, while you stand without. I've prepared the house, and I've made room for the camels. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can't have God without having the Holy Ghost. Come on now. You can't have just a born again message. You've got to have a spirit filled message. And you can't just have a spirit filled message. You've got to have a kingdom word for this hour. Something that is updated. Fresh. My God. Hallelujah. Them ghost stories ain't going to have revival. You're going to have to pray you in some new experiences and some new testimonies. Praise God, we're looking at look at Jerry. She's a new testimony. Yes. Brand new hot off the wire. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah! And that's what we gotta have right now. We gotta have some new miracles in the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Alright, verse 50. That's my last portion I want to read. Verse 50. Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak to thee bad or good. Rebecca's before you take her. Go. Verse 52. It came to pass when Abraham's servant heard it, he worshiped. Verse 53. Here comes now the gifts in the home. Amen. It says that, that, that the servants brought him both jewels of silver, jewels of gold, raiment. My Lord. And gave them to Rebecca, and he gave also to her brother and her mother precious things. When you make way for the Spirit of God to come into your life, you can start getting ready to experience some precious things, some things of the anointing, some things of jewels rare. Amen. And the Bible said, verse 54, they ate and drank. The men were with him to turn it on. I got up in the morning, he said, Send me away. Verse 55, her brother and her mother said, let her stay just a few days. Then he said, at least ten. And Eliezer said, don't hinder me. Praise God. Don't hinder me. Oh my God. I've come after something. I didn't pray this far to go home empty. 
And then the Bible said, they said, well, bring Rebecca out here and let her ask. You know what Rebecca said? I'm ready. There's a bride ready. Somebody tell me why she's ready. Because she's made herself ready. Can you say amen? How many know the bride's got to be ready? Ready for the supernatural. Ready to, to move into gifts. Ready to minister life and deliverance to the elect of God. So they sent her away and told her to be the mother. Oh my God. Let me find that verse. He said, he told her, and I've been reading out of another Bible and it's on a different page. That old Bible I got, I can even tell you what side of the page it's on. Hallelujah. Mother of thousands of millions. Verse 60. God. Now Abraham, he said, you're the father and Sarah's the mother of what? Many nations. But that seed now has went on into another generation. Now it's in the seed of sonship. And what did he say to that son's bride? You're going to be the mother of thousands of millions. Not only that, he said, you're going to possess the gate of them that hate you. Now the same promises to Abraham, your seed. Now what did he say? Your seed shall possess the gate of your enemy. That's what the Lord told Abraham. Your seed shall possess the gate of your enemy. Now I could talk about the bride all night long. But the biggest kingdom principle for you to get a hold of and understand is this. The bride is a mystery. You read the Bible and find out it takes a Holy Ghost revelation to understand the bride of Christ. Paul said it's a mystery. Are you here? And you should also know that, that, that there can only be one bride. There can't be more than one bride. Listen to it carefully. Abraham already had Sarah. And he had Hagar for a handmaid. Jacob had Leah and Rachel. But the son, Isaac, only had one bride. He never had a concubine and he never had a maiden and he never had none of that. He had one bride. Are you hearing me? So there's only one bride. And then the other part you should know is everybody that's in the church isn't in the bride. The bride is the ecclesia. They're the true church. They're the called out ones. They're them that have an ear in this hour to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Well, brother, you say they ain't saved. That ain't what I said. I didn't say they weren't saved. They are saved, but they ain't in the bride. Right. So I said, what's the difference? Well, the difference is you husbands are not going to take every woman home with you tonight. You're going to take your bride home with you. And Jesus, well, glory to God. Jesus won't just talk certain things. Right. Oh, hallelujah. I already feel the Holy Ghost. He won't just talk any old way. Right. But to his bride, he'll tell his secrets. He'll let you in on things you never knew. He'll speak to you by his spirit. He'll speak to you in a way he won't speak to you. Somebody said, well, I don't know about that. Well, then you don't know Matthew 13. He said to his disciples, Blessed are your ears, for they hear. Your eyes, for they see for such things desire. He wouldn't even talk to the prophets this way. He wouldn't even talk to those of old that way. There are some things you know tonight that even angels have desired to look into. Why does he choose to let you in on it? Yet you figured it out yet? Because you can hear him. You've got your ear to his breasts like John the Beloved. Everybody else is wondering, is it me and who shall sit where? And John's got his ear, door, his ear nailed to the heart of Jesus. Amen. He can hear him. And who is the writer of the most intimate relationship in the whole Bible? It is John the Beloved. Praise the Lord. Some starts with Galilee and some starts with Jerusalem and some starts with the inn and the stable. And John starts with he's the word made flesh in the beginning was the word. He heard in a different level than what the rest heard in. Amen. Isaac, the son of promise, has only got one bride. Jesus is the son of promise and he's only got one bride. All right, Revelation 22, 17, the Spirit and the Bride say, come. Through the Word of God, we understand that the Bride is glorious, beautiful, wealthy, full of life. Also, she has a voice which has a distinct sound in this earth. I 
Isaiah said it was a mournful thing when God cut off Jerusalem because the voice of the bride wasn't heard in the streets anymore. But how many know there's other places in the Bible when the voice of the bride starts sounding off, all the virgins get in the street and start dancing. Hallelujah! And all the children come alive and start getting happy and playing. Why? Because it's just a sign of life. If there's a bride, there's a groom. And if that groom and that bride come together, there's going to be a birthing of something. A birthing of something. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The bride has a peculiar sound. She also has a special ear to hear. We see in the Bible that we are in the day when the voice of the bride shall be heard. Also we're in the day when the bride will be unveiled, uncovered, which simply means she'll be presented as is said in Ephesians 5, he sanctifies her by the washing of the water of the Word that He may what? Present her unto Himself a glorious church. Not having, now all my life I grew up hearing that Scripture quoted. He's coming back after. But that is not how that Scripture reads. Read it yourself. It says He will present it unto Himself. A glorious church not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. In Revelation 21, the bride's referred to as a city. The city's described in great detail, and it's not for the purpose of us getting a natural view of a bunch of natural stuff, but it's the work of the Spirit that's going on. Gold is divine nature. Jewel and ornamentation are gifts and fruits and anointings and powers of the Holy Ghost that are granted her in this hour. And you say, man, oh my God. He said, come hither and I'll show you the lamb, the bride, the, the lamb's wife, the bride. In order to see her, John had to get in a great and high mountain. Oh, hallelujah. The bride is said to be sought, bought, chosen, washed, sanctified. My Lord, I've already preached me happy. Prepared, clothed, Adorned, and one scripture even says, decked out. He decketh her as a bridegroom, decketh his bride. Hallelujah. The, the bride is the true church. We are called out of the harlot system, yes, amen. which is exactly why Abraham said, Now we're into the story. Eliezer, I cannot have my seed going into this land of bondage. These people are going to serve us. You ain't picking no bride out of here. You go back to where I come from. You get my son a bride. And here's where it all starts. Put your hand under my thigh. Now honey, in just a few more years, the Lord Jesus is going to put His hand on Jacob's thigh. Are you hearing me? And when He does, He's going to walk like a different man. He's going to limp. He's going to have a testimony. He's the glory be to God. And so he said, "Put now here's where it comes. The prayer of agreement. Everybody say the prayer of agreement. There's power in agreement. But you've got to be careful who you get to agree with you. Because how can two walk together except they be agreed? And I'm afraid most people are agreeing with you just because they might feel a little sorry for you and they're just offering you a little quick mercy for the moment saying, oh, I'll be believing with you. Other people are agreeing with you because the Bible says agree with your adversary quickly while you're in the way. They don't like you, so the least they hear you, the better off they are. And they said, you've got to be careful who you get to agree with you. Amen. You may get somebody that don't believe like you do. You may get a hold, well, glory, I felt that. You might get a hold of somebody that's full of unbelief. You might get a hold of somebody that's going to negate your whole conversation. By the time they get in their car and start driving off, there they stood on that parking lot, told you they was going to agree with you for a miracle, and they may drive away telling somebody, if the Lord don't move for them, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't want nobody like that agreeing with me. I always said if I was ever on my back, and that's kind of the way you pray or talk, yeah, my God, I'd rather lay there by myself and get a breakthrough than to have anybody inject the poison of unbelief into the situation. 
He called the eldest of his servants. He called the one that had been with him the longest. Why would he call him? Because he had seen the days when God was appearing to Abraham, telling him, you're going to have a son. You're going to have a seed. You're going to have a promise. And he knew Abraham was 100 years old and dead, and he knew Sarah was barren. And he watched God perform. Come on, somebody. Romans 4 said Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. My God, is anybody persuaded tonight that he that begun a good work in you is not going to back out at the last minute? Do you believe God will do what he said he would do? Do you believe he'll save them? Do you believe he'll deliver them? I don't care if you just bail them out the fifth time. Do you believe God is able to turn it all around? You've got to have strong people. And if you ain't got strength around them, then you're going to have to just agree with the Lord. The greatest, the strongest binding contact of agreement is for you to get in agreement with the Word. Hallelujah. And it's in my personal opinion. I ain't giving you gospel here. I'm giving you my opinion. You ought to do that before you ask any human to come in agreement with you. You ought to already have your mind made up what's going to happen. Hallelujah. The second factor in this is the way Abraham sent him. It was the same as Abraham going himself. As my father has sent me, praise the Lord. Well, glory. Even so send I you. I point unto you a kingdom, even as my Father. What we're seeing is the present day ministry of the works that I do shall ye do, and greater works than these. Because the truth is, He gave Him His name, He gave Him His wealth, He gave Him His goods, He gave Him His camels, He gave Him everything He had. Oh, I wish I had the church that believed God had given you everything. He didn't short you on nothing. He's gave you the whole inheritance. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I believe the Lord's called you in and said, get up here and get in agreement with me on something. I've sent you. I've called you by my name. I've invested this kingdom in you. My Lord, my Lord. He said, you, you, you come in agreement with me that you go in and get a wife. He said, I know I'm willing. I know you're willing. But what if she ain't willing? Hello. That's what he asked him. I know you're willing. I know I'm willing. What if she ain't willing? He said, then turn around and come home. That's what he told him. Turn around and come home. Oh my God. I'm telling you, if God orchestrates a thing, it'll have to happen. So he said, how can this huge church sitting over here on the back side of this street have revival and fill up? Honey, let me tell you how. People's praying. Somebody's got their hand on the Lord's thigh. Somebody's come in agreement. You just hide and watch and see what happens. Somebody say praise the Lord. I ain't worried about all them. He's in agreement. I'm in agreement. You're in agreement. <coughs> Don't you reckon if he's seen it through that far, he'll get the rest. He'll get the rest. Praise the Lord. So the, the next part was he loaded up. He takes one camel to ride for, for a rider and nine more that ain't for nothing but bearing gifts. How many gifts are there? Nine gifts of the Spirit. Five gifts of the ministry. But nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Oh, praise the Lord. And he didn't want her to just see a little bit of what He loaded them things down. My God, I don't know why churches are so careful about the gifts. Of, oh, praise the Lord. You build a new church and then you start having visitors come in. Some people start muting down the Holy Ghost. Well, the truth is you're going to have to keep him muted to keep them folks. Why would you want to portray to anybody that you ain't a Holy Ghost church? Come on, somebody. Why would you want them to believe you were laid back? 
I don't like the term casual service. Could I preach just a little bit on that? I know what they mean. Come dressed as you are, and I agree with that. Well, to an extent, I mean, we're not running a bikini contest, but you know what I mean. Hallelujah. We mean we're not clothesline religion preachers. And I understand that, that part. But they ain't nothing casual about God. Ca casual means laid back, easy. You know, when I think of casual, I think about slumping down in my seat instead of sitting up straight, kicking my feet. Let me tell you something, folks. Oh, hallelujah. This thing with God is business, serious business. He means to have a people called after His name who will do His works in this earth. And He's not casually seeing after that. He don't get up on Monday and decide He don't care whether it happens or not. It's the burning desire of God's heart to see us fulfill His very commission and plan in this earth. And every day we go without manifestation. Come on. There's another day for the Spirit to cry out within us. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Not coming in the sky and clouds. Come forth in your church. Well, glory to God in power, in demonstration of the Spirit and of the Holy Ghost. God's gifts in operation, heaped up, jewels rare. Treasures beyond. Don't just string a little pearl on each camel. Load them down. Let that bride see what she's married. I wish somebody in here knew what you married into tonight. I glory to God. I wish two of you could see what you married into. My God, the wealth you obtained. The glory you obtained. The household you're of. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say praise the Lord. My God. <laughs> glory to God. He had His name. He had His power. He had His wealth. He had His goods. And He had His gifts. And He loaded them down. My God. One to ride on. But the other nine is just for the display of the glory of God. How many believe tonight the Lord's provided a vehicle for us to ride on? Amen. That's the revelation of Jesus. Amen. If we are in that revelation, then we ought to be manifesting mm -hmm. nine camel loads worth. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Of gifts of the Spirit. Why? Because that's where the kingdom seeds planted yes. in the bride. Yes. I'm trying to tell every one of you, God ain't about to give up on one of you because He's invested too much in you. Yeah. He's planted His seed yeah. in you. Well, glory to God, and every word that comes out of Him won't return unto Him, boy. Yeah. It'll accomplish that which He pleases. It'll prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. And I want to tell you something. Uh, claiming your lack of this stuff is just as much an excuse as any other excuse. Recognizing where you fall short and claiming your lack all the time is nothing more than another excuse. I don't act like I got it if I ain't got it. Are you listening to me? You think I'd come in here and tell you I didn't have it? I'd run till I got it. Well, glory to God. I'd praise God out loud till I felt it. I'd get some of you, your, your way out is not to have some prophet visit you. It's just for you to simply do what you know to do. Amen. You're waiting on the spectacular missing the supernatural. Yeah. All together. The first rule of the supernatural is to be led by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's just as true in Him telling me what corner to turn on the road as it is for me to go have revival somewhere led by the supernatural Spirit of God. You get to looking for the spectacular and you got the car ahead of a horse. Them signs follow. Yeah. Yeah. What? Them that believe. Mm -hmm. And evil, say it with me, you know the Bible folks, and evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Yeah. That is, you can't have this thing do you believe you got it already. It won't manifest till you're convinced. And as long as you're convinced that you come up short and fall short and then you just say, well, what's the use to try? That's just another excuse. That's just another excuse. 
Come on, somebody. I want to tell you, you ain't going to get nowhere in God if you get rid of that inherited religion. Well, I'm preaching, you just don't know it. Let me, let me tell you a testimony. G.A. Mangan told his wife, Vesta Mangan, she'd been raised in an apostolic Pentecostal church all her life. She looked the part, played the part. She played her accordion, led his singing, then prayed in the altar with the sinner, went and sat on the front row while he preached. One day he got shook up with her and told her, he said, uh, Vesta Mangan, you inherited your religion from your mom and daddy. He said, until you let the Lord get a hold of you and shake away that old traditional Pentecostal girl and get your own experience with this thing, it just ain't going to work. She said, well, girl, tell me what to do. He said, pray one hour a day and fast one day a week. She done it for three years. The third year, they were running a revival in a church. He woke, she woke him up. She said she was screaming so loud she woke herself up. It came through in the night. The river started flowing. He got up and grabbed her and held her. Didn't know what was wrong. When she got where she would talk, she said, I'll tell you one thing. She said, you won't ever have to beg me or kick my sins to do nothing no more. She said, in fact, you may be sorry you woke me up. She's 91 years old and preaches all over this United States. Are you listening to me? She don't weigh much as a soap, a soap and water wet, but she can dance all over the state and wear her, wear her little high heel shoes at 90-something years of age. They've prayed revival in every church they've ever had. They right now turn that church over uh, to their son, running thousands and thousands of people. I don't mean a dead church. They may not have everything we've got as far as believing a life on the end times, but brother, they got the Holy Ghost and they got action and they got power. And you know why? Because all they do around and there's pray, 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 pray. They have all night prayer. They have midday prayer. They have early evening prayer. They have morning prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Why, just do it. Just do it. Let me tell you, dear saints, something. God is not going to come, ring your doorbell, and shake you every morning and say, would you pray? You silly thing. You, you just got to do it. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, start thanking Him. Start praising Him. Start glorifying Him. It won't be long. You'll be spoiling and talking in tongues and shouting. Can you say praise the Lord? Now, let's get into another thing. Hallelujah. It's evening time intercession. You know what time He arrived on the scene? Evening time. You know what's happening right now? Glory to God. Oh, Lord, I feel that. Evening time revelation. Evening time intercession. Ha! Who come out? Sunday on my higher. They did the morning offering in the outer court at the altar of sacrifice. But the evening offering was made at the altar of incense where the sweet-smelling savor arose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many are ready to pray with an intercession that causes your prayer to be poured out on the altar of heaven? And then after they pass through that round and they come back into the earth, you'll see some shaking and some lightning and some thundering. Hallelujah. God will move this earth with your prayer if you'll start getting in the evening time sacrifice. I mean, I'm not talking about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. I'm talking about a time in God right now. The evening and the morning were the first day. Glory be to God. Evening time. Everybody say evening time intercession. That's what our soul is entering into. Hey, we're in a travail right now. Oh my God. Evening time intercession. God is punching some people. Waking them up. Oh my God. He's going to wake all of you up if my prayers have anything to do with it. I don't care if you don't sleep for three nights. I've got to have somebody bind their faith with me and believe God for this thing to break. Hallelujah. This old thing that's hung over here for 50 years, never getting that full breakthrough, always stopping just short of it. My God, building up and then falling through. I want somebody who'll just tear that whole house down and build up a new house of glory unto the Lord. And that's what it's going to take. And I don't mean to be so hard at you, but if God answers my prayer, you people will be some of the praying people that's ever walked the face of this earth. 
You don't come in here, your eyes fall shut from weeping. You come in here not even able to talk in English because the Holy Ghost has got a hold in your tongue. You come through that door and shout all the way to the pew you sit on. I'm looking for dope addicts to get changed just walking up and down that road out there. I'm not looking to build a denomination. I'm not looking to have a committed meeting. I'm not looking to have another hot spot place where somebody can just feel good. I'm looking to see the river break loose from the altar and flow all the way out to the outer court. Hallelujah. And it's got to be that way. Even in time of sacrifice. Even in time of intercession. Zechariah 14, 7 says, It shall be one day that, that, that it sh which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall be come to pass that in evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters go out of Jerusalem. He got down in the evening. In the evening time. Oh my God. That's when women go draw water. Oh, hallelujah. That's when the woman goes because she's thirsty. Amen. Every evening, you know what the Levites doing? Trim the lamps and replenish the oil. Hallelujah. You know what happened to Elijah in the evening? He called fire down on the sacrifice. Psalm 141, 2. David said, Let my prayer be set forth as incense, and the lifting up of my hands be as the evening sacrifice. Daniel 9, when he broke through that prayer we've been preaching to you about the 21 days, do you know what happened to him on the 21 day? In the time of the evening oblation or the evening sacrifice, Gabriel swiftly flew to him, touched him, and woke him up and said, I heard you, glory to God, the first day you ever prayed. And you say, Amen. Oh my God. I don't know what you want to do. I want to live better, pray better, sing better, play better, preach better, shout better, heal better, manifest God better. I want a better things move. I want better, better, better. Amen. And so, you know, Eliezer gets down. And this is what I want you to say. He got so specific, so specific. I want you to know that God is a specific God. And if you get to pray in specific, He will get very aware of what you want to happen. This is bold praying, folks. This isn't that old religious lackadaisical ho-hum. Amen. This is bold praying. God, I want you to know there's going to be a lot of women coming here today. But I know there's one you've picked out. Oh, hallelujah. And so, Lord, I'm asking you in that, that when it, she comes, let her come over here by me to get her water. And then don't just let her water me. Let her notice these gifts. Let her know the old oh, glory to God. The true church is going to notice the Holy Ghost. The true church is going to get the whole package. This fundamentalist ain't got the whole package. You won't like what I'm going to say, but even the Pentecost ain't got the whole package. There's a resurrection day anointing. There is a restoration revival. Somebody say praise the Lord. How many is seeking God for the whole package? Lord, you don't want just what you had last year, do you? Here you sit tonight. You're not going to start to death talking about last year, are you? Aren't you going to get a fresh drink? Isaiah said, with joy, we'll draw water. Hey, glory to God out of the wells of salvation. This became a very menial task. Number one, from the reading of the Scripture, the well ain't even on surface ground. The well's deep. It's a spring. She's got to go down to the well. Read it. She went down to the well. You know what that means? There were steps going down to the water. Hallelujah. He watched her descend into that water. And then he watched her ascend. I wish some people would get that anointing on them. I want to go down in that water. I've been down in it. But I'd like to go in it again. I'm not just talking about that water. Now I'm talking about that Holy Ghost life. And then she came back up. And he said, I pray thee let me drink of that water. And she, the Bible said she made haste. Lord, there's a bride who ain't going to have to be told 50 times. Psalms 110 said, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. There's getting some people who are willing in this hour. They're not going to have to be begged. They're not going to have to be coached. They're not going to have to be talked into 
to these things. But they're going to make haste. Oh, praise the Lord. Everybody I've ever seen that moved Johnny on the spot when the Lord commanded always got a miracle. Everybody. Amen? Everybody. Sometimes in this church I watch when we have visiting ministers and stuff, sometimes it even happens with me. You can say something like, run to the altar. I wish you could see everybody looking at one another to decide who's going to go first. I'd forget y'all and dive in that altar. I wouldn't let nobody, no matter how much I loved them, mm -mm, hold me back. I'd go to moving. This church has always had the brakes on when it comes to obedience. Especially if it ain't me up here. Preacher religion. Evangelists can say give the orders and look at one another. Amen. You can get mad. It's okay. I done got all my good in. I'm behind my head. Preacher can say run. And then when he leaves, you know what they're doing. You know, we had a preacher come here and preach one time, and it was on Pastor Appreciation. And, and he got down here and encouraged the whole church. We had a church full of people that morning, and he, and he encouraged them. Some of you remember this. He said, sit down and write your pastor a little letter today. T and t tell him what a blessing means to you. And I've got a church that night, and I think I got about four or five letters, and I was very appreciative for it. Most folks said, you don't need a letter from us to know we let. Look, people with a problem over obedience over a little old half a page letter ain't going to give a $5 to missions. I'm going to ain't going to show up to an all night prayer meeting. And sure ain't going to Jericho march till they see revival. Don't shout me down now. We need a people who's willing. She made haste. I'm looking for the hour to come in here where there's no prodding or plumbing or pulling or gouging to get water. It'll just be spewing out all over the place. Make haste. And, and then she said, let me get you camera. Now I got to preach here just a few more minutes to tell you. It, take, it, it took him somewhere in the vicinity of 80 to 150 gallons of water to water 10 camels. Now how many trips is that up and down the, the well? But how many of you right now in your life watering camels? How many got them knowing you knew something big is getting ready to happen? And you may be running up downstairs right now, but something in you said, don't quit now, don't quit now, don't quit now. Something's coming, something's that. Oh my God. Water, I tell you, church, you better water the camels. You, well, glory, you better praise Him. You better sing to Him. You better dance. You better shout. You better feel Him. You better love, love on Him. You better pray to Him. Why? Because when them camels get full, yeah. hallelujah, the purpose is going to be revealed. Oh yes, right now it's a test of faithfulness. And don't talk to me about your faith if you ain't got faithfulness. Because if you ain't faithful, you ain't got good faith. Do you understand that? The first statement of faith is faithful. Faithful to love Him. Faithful to serve Him. Faithful to talk about Him. Can you say amen? Whatever you believe in the most is what you'll devote the most to. Whatever you're the most enticed with, that's what you'll devote the most time, money, effort. Amen. So when he when she came up, and the Bible said, she said, I will water them until they are what? Done drinking. I won't quit till I see them for, till I see they're full. I won't stop until they're satisfied. And when they got satisfied, you know what he did? Turned around there and took off an earring, hallelujah, of gold, and then put two bracelets on her hand that was like nothing that gal had ever seen before. And her brother come out to meet her. You know her brother, old Laban, that thought he had swindled Jacob out of an inheritance. Come on, somebody. Here he come, met her, and the first thing he wanted to know was, who give you that? Where did that? Oh, they're about to come up and say, what's happened over here? What, where did y'all get the, what are you doing to get, oh my God, we ain't doing nothing but watering camels. We ain't doing nothing but being obedient. 
We ain't doing nothing but putting the Holy Ghost first. Uh, you? And how many get blessed tonight? And when they come, if you ain't, I am. So we're in good shape. He come up out there, loaded them camels up, said, you got room for me? That boy said, we ain't just got room for you, brother. I done had them clean out a spot for them camels. I'm making way for the Holy Ghost. Oh, to get in the middle of my life and be hallelujah. I'm going to make room for His gifts. I'm going to make room for His anointing. I'm going to make room for His presence. And what happened? He came home with it. And he told him, he said, we're going to eat. He said, no, you're not going to eat. I'm going to prophesy a little bit. I'm going to tell you the plan of God. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to tell you what the plan is. Let me tell you what I prayed. Let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you how fast it all happened. And they backed off and said, we can't say yea or nay. We can't, doesn't matter whether we like it or not like it. The Lord has done this thing. And we, how many know God's getting ready to do something for you? It ain't going to matter who likes it and who don't like it. It's big enough, my God. It's strong enough. It's great enough. They'll have to fall down and give glory unto God. Hallelujah. It's going to be that big. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, now my shot. Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord would say, I'm exceeding your expectations. And yea, I'm going beyond the very prayers you had prayed. But I beckon unto thee, call unto me, and make thy requests known, and let thy petitions be made known. Boldly stand in my presence and declare these great things that thou longest to see. For it is my desire to give them unto thee, and to make known unto thee my will, and my counsel, for it shall stand and shall not fall. So rest on my promises tonight. Stand on my word tonight. Anchor thyself in my presence and stay in my glory for such rewards are thine for the taking say of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. I went home. Spent the night. Got up. My God. I wish some of you could experience that. I wish I could say, go to bed one night in your regular old bed. Next night though, glory to God. you going home to a husband who God's made the richest man in all the earth, who's got so much favor the enemy won't even touch him. Can you say amen? Let me tell you, folks, they got loaded up and there's still coming a little bit of controversy there. Some of the families said, well, now, wait a minute, let us keep her at least 10 more days. You don't need nothing to keep you. That's what's wrong with some of y'all now. You let everything keep you. I should say some of us probably. But we let stuff keep us. Hold us up. Get in our way. Talk us out of it. I don't mess you keep you let keep you and, and let 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 divert you. It's been going on for years. And ain't over with yet. Watch one night away from it, gonna hurt. What's one hour of prayer gonna do? I tell you what it's gonna do, it's gonna bind a strong man cast him out and his goods ain't safe no more because they're stronger than he has come up in that house. Come on. How many of you have traded uh, godly moments in your life to satisfy or pacify somebody else's wish for you? And it didn't do you a bit of good, did it? They still want the same old thing. It's always taken, no give. The best thing you can do is make your mind up come hell or high water. I'm going to touch God over this. Can you say amen? I'm going to touch God over this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And this night I'm restoring unto you that soundness 
and you shall no longer war and battle over what to do. But I shall give you clear instruction, and I shall speak very comfortably to your soul and spirit, and you shall have a knowing in your inner man that 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 I've commanded you will be able to do and fulfill, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fast answers. The Bible said while he was praying, she come up before he quit talking. Can you say amen? Now you all know my granddad done that with mother's shoes when she was a little girl. They had to go to church the next morning. They didn't have, you don't understand, they had to carry her in slippers if they had to. That's how adamant they were about being in the Lord's house. And so he, my nana said she ain't got no shoes. He said, I'm going in the bathroom to pray. He shut the door and got down on his face. And while he was in there praying, somebody knocked on the door. Nana went and opened the door. The man was standing there with a shoebox under his arm. Under his arm. He said, uh, said, the Lord spoke to him and said, Charlotte didn't have no shoes. Now the stores were already closed. God had to speak before he ever got down on his knees. But he said, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I well, how many want to move in that realm? Well, the minute you say it, there it is. There it is. That's the way I live. And Ezra was the minute he said it, God honored what he said. All right? And so i got to wrap this up. But then I'm over time already, I think. But it said that, that uh, uh, whenever uh, he got her and, and said, you going or not? She said, I'm going. And he put her on. Come on. They was coming back. And listen to this. The Bible said in the evening, Isaac went out in the field to pray. Lord God, I tell you where this bride is going to experience. Oh, glory to God. This groom's love and intimacy. She's going to go out and meet him in prayer. It's evening time. He's in the field. So we said, hang in the close about said, is the voice of my beloved he running on the mountains, skipping on the hills. My beloved spake said to me, come away, my fair one. My God, rise up and come. How many believe that's the call to intimacy that the Lord has given his bride in this hour? Rise up, my fair one. Fair one means spouse. Spouse means bride. Rise up. How many times in the Bible, Psalms of Solomon, does it say spouse, spouse, spouse? What's that mean? Bride, bride, bride. Let me say, you, you, that's the second why people today don't have a clue what the Song of Solomon is about. It's about the bride and the groom. It's about the church in Jesus. But nobody can't get a hold of it because they can't get past all them statements in there that talks about the devil being like a godly. Come on, butter and milk under his tongue, lips like a thread of scarlet. They can't handle all that. Why? Because they got a natural mindset. But if you get the Holy Ghost, you'll find out He ain't doing a thing in the world but letting you know how much like Him you really are. Can you say amen? And so when she was riding in that train of camels, there are all them gifts. That's kind of, that's kind of, that's the way you want to meet the groom. You want to meet the groom full of those nine gifts, full of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. When she met him in the field, looked in the field and seen him, she knew something hit her. This was an arranged marriage. Yeah. I tell you, so is this one I'm talking about. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. It's an arranged marriage. And I want you to know, glory to God, that there ain't nobody going to have to tell you who he is. When you see him, you be like him. Something in you will bear witness. And the Bible said she jumped off that camel and grabbed a veil and wrapped it around her face. She wanted him to know that she was his bride. Yeah. Holy Lord God Almighty. Yeah. She wanted him to know. And the Bible said she said, who is that? Oh, there's another time the Lord said, who is this? Come on. Coming up out of the wilderness. Say amen somebody in the Bible said, Eliezer said, that's my master, my Lord. Oh, glory to God. And the Bible said immediately, Isaac took her into his mother's tent and he had mourned Sarah and she 
came in and when the bride come in, the morning left. She healed him. His morning was over. His sorrow was over. Why? Because he had a bride. Yeah. He had somebody through which they could reproduce that seed, that kingdom seed. Now has a womb. And that's what this is all about. God has put Himself in us. Christ in us. In you, in me. It's the hope of glory. And He's coming to be glorified in His saints. Praise the Lord. And so the coming you need to worry over in this hour is for Him to come out of your ivory palace. Yes. Yeah. Psalm 45 said, Out of the ivory yeah. palace. I'm looking at a house full of them tonight. And the Lord wants to raise up out of His holy habitation and bring forth a man child in this earth. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Thank you for your hearing here. We love you and bless you in the name of the Lord. Glory.